Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wars and this is my first review in quite some time so a little bit nervous to get started but um, I've got two travel retail uh, whiskies to review today. Both are Islas. We have the Laphroaig 4 Oak and the Lagavulin 10 Year. Now the reason for this review today is they're both travel retail so they're not available um, in either's core lineup. And um, they're relatively the same proof. The Lagavulin starts at 43% with the Laphroaig at 40%. And um, they both have, they both share um, a really interesting characteristic that I want to uh, go into more detail today. So the Four Oak Laphroaig um, is obviously aged in four different casks, but not a sherry. Um, and this is what intrigues me because I love the Laphroaig quarter cask and I actually prefer my Laphroaigs non sherry So the cask influence on this whiskey is ex bourbon barrels as you'd expect, you would expect, um, quarter casks, so instantly I was hooked because I adore the quarter cask Laphroaig, um, but it's also got some virgin American oak so I'd imagine that's going to give it a real um, a woody a woodiness that's different to the quarter cask. The quarter cask made it a little bit more library antique wood, um, wood varnish, whereas a virgin American oak that's going to bring a lot of wood spice I'd imagine. And then we have European oak hogshead which um, I don't actually think I've had on many whiskies so I can't quite picture how that would influence it but um, this, this whiskey has interested me for a long, long time. Um, just going over the tasting notes here, and it says it, it's golden, it's creamy, peat smoked Isla malt with warm toasted vanilla notes and hints of sandalwood, pine, fir and willow. So again, it's, it's letting me know it's, it's going to be very woody. So, really excited. And uh, to review with it, we've got the Lagville and 10 year old. Um, now, I have the 8 and the 9 year, but not the 16 year. And the 8 and the 9 were very different, so I was intrigued with the 10 year. So, the, the Lagavulin 10 is aged in a combination of ex bourbon, well, bourbon casks. We have ex bourbon casks, but also it, it calls it rejuvenated bourbon casks, um, which I'm not quite sure. And then on the back, it it says that um, it's first fill um, bourbon casks. So I, I would imagine that would amplify the wood aspect as well. Okay, so I'll quickly pour and then we'll get into the review. Okay, so going off colour, the Lagavulin is a little bit darker, a little bit more of a burnt golden amber, whereas the Four Oak it's just that classic Laphroaig uh, natural colour, which is, well, I say natural colour, I shouldn't have said that, classic Laphroaig colour on its non sherried um, single malts, which is a really light straw golden combination going on. As I said, um, the Laphroaig certainly won't be um, chill filtered or um, natural colour, definitely not. The Lagavulin, on the other hand, um, No, the, the Lagavulin also doesn't mention it, so I would imagine the Lagavulin also um, isn't natural colour or uh, non chill filtered. Starting off with the Laphroaig on the nose, and instantly I'm getting beautiful reminders of that classic Laphroaig nose. And, and for me, that classic Laphroaig nose is um, the from the very first day I tried it, it's been exactly the same. The only difference is the peat aspect and the smokiness aspect has been dialed down as I've got more acclimatised to it. And um, But that really unique forest DNA, which, which, which I call it, I've never seen replicated in another whiskey. And um, it, if you could picture yourself in a wet forest, I don't know, in Scotland, for instance, um, and you've got damp, 
leaves, rotting vegetation, um, damp wood. It's just a beautiful, I smell it and I picture myself there every time. And I, I love that about Lefroy. That's there. But also, um, a lot of wood presents, which I was expecting, but nothing like the quarter cask. So I would say if the quarter cask is a whiskey that you didn't really get on with, don't be put off by the four oak, thinking it's going to be a similar experience. Because even though it's got quarter cask influence in it, I'd imagine it'd be only a small amount. Um, and also perhaps being dialed down to 40% instead of 48% um, really reduces the intensity of the wood. But I would say on the nose, um, certainly the virgin American oak is stronger. Um, so I'm getting more of a sawdust um, on the nose. Prickly, spicy wood. Wood shavings. Um, instead of a more refined mahogany uh, in, a, in, a, in a library um, kind of vibe. Still peaty, still smoky, still salty. Lots of salt water there. It's woody, foresty, very medicinal. I love medicinal whiskies, and, and this is no exception. Salty seaweed. Iodine, I'm loving it. Um, even uh, Band Aid. But uh, the beauty of Lefroy, which I think you only really get once you get fully acclimatised to Islas, is, and you won't get this if, it, if you're new to Islas, is um, a, a real sweetness there, but it's not a fruity sweetness for me. Um, it, it's more of a vanilla like a vanilla cream. There's a, there's a creamy aspect which is balancing out those uh, quite spicy, prickly wood shavings. And it smells really nice. Onto the Lagavulin. Very different experience. More peated. Bringing in a bit more tobacco. I wasn't picking up tobacco on the Lovroy, but I'm getting it more on the Lagavulin. Those forest uh, vibes are gone. I'm getting tobacco, more peat. There's a wood element as well, um, which must come from the first fill casks. It's just, it's just um, dialing it up a little bit and I like it. I'm really liking it. I still wouldn't picture it as an antique wood library, uh, which I do get from um, some Lagavulins. But there's this sweetness to the Lagavulin. The Lagavulin is less salty than the Lefroy. It's more sweet. It's still salty, but less salty, um, but a little bit more sweet. But that sweetness, I'm getting more of a butterscotch creme brulee, a caramel. Okay, to taste. I'll start off with the Lefroy. Yeah, and the wood influence on the nose that's different is, this is definitely wood shavings, whereas the, the Lagavulin does venture more towards that uh, old wood uh, library element, which I adore on whiskies. So, wood-wise, I'm going with the Lagavulin so far. Okay. Wow. Really collecting all that wood influence on the taste. It's really interesting because the whisky for a 40% is really creamy and quite viscous but when you when you take it in there's wood spice spiciness just popping off it's very woody but that that creaminess that vanilla cream that balances it out um it's, it's really quite nice
The fact that it's dialed down at 40% really makes this whiskey manageable if you're not um, a wood fan in whiskies. It's not too woody, um, purely because of the ABV. It's lovely. Um, less of the uh, forest and peat that I got on the nose, it's dialed down more on the taste. And on the taste, it's more vanilla cream, wood, and um, iodine seaweed, salty seaweed. Interesting. Okay. Little, little bit of a spanner in the works. I would say the Lagavulin on the, on the taste is actually more woody. A bit more of a wood spiciness, but it, it, it doesn't go off in different directions. It's just a more consistent wood spice. I really do picture this whiskey as um, a cigar lounge in a gentleman's club. Um, with, with that mahogany wood influence. I think this Lagavulin 10 is a mood whiskey. Um, and I'm all for it because I'm enjoying that mood. Just quickly going back to the, the four oak. Two very different whiskies. That share a lot of similar characteristics. Um, this this review, in terms of which is better, comes purely down to personal preference. A little bit of a nut vibe come into that Lagavulin just at the end there. A little bit of a, a dry almond, perhaps. But overall, I'm loving the wood influence on both these whiskies. I love, um, and I actually don't enjoy wood influence on non-peated um, whiskies. But when they're peated, that wood influence, I love it. Turn it up as much as you like. I'm all in. Um, two very, very good whiskies. Um, quickly touching on what I paid for them. Um, the Four Oak, I paid around 51 euros, which I think is about 46 pounds. But remember, this is a litre bottle. So I would, I would imagine it's around 33, 34 pounds if you just did it for a, a normal 700 ml, 70 cl bottle. And the Lagavulin 10, um, was actually a gift and this was 40, I think around 42 euros, 44 euros, so around 40 pounds. Um, so the Lagavulin works out a little bit cheaper if it was the same size bottle. Um, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. I think overall, the when it comes down to value for money, I know you can get a Laphroaig Select for £23, £25. This is about £10 more expensive. I know I can get the Laphroaig 10 for £28, £30. And I know I can get the Laphroaig Quarter Cask, which is bottled at 48%, not 40%, for around £30, £33. So this one actually comes in the most expensive of the, th of the four uh, Laphroaigs. Um, and I'm not sure... Certainly not my favourite of the four. I'm not sure. I think it might come bottom of the four, but but that that doesn't mean that it's a bad whiskey. Um, I I really enjoy all four of those Lafroigs, um, but I think value for money it probably is a little bit worse off. Um, and so if you can't get hold of this uh, bottling because I don't know you could, you don't go uh, through airports much or um, 
they're, they're not in your shop. These have filtered out into some shops, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, worry um, or feel bad. Um, I'd, I'd sooner probably go with one of those other three Lefroys anyway, even though it's really nice. As for the lag full intent, um, I think it is value for money. I think it is value for money. I think for around forty pounds, um, I think I think this whiskey is value for money. Um, so I and I actually think the Lagavulin I prefer a little bit more than the Lafroig. Um, so today, the winner of the travel retail um, Isla War is the Lagavulin Tenure. And if you enjoyed the video today, I know it's probably not perfect. It's been a few months since I've recorded a video. Um, please drop a like or comment on the video um, and subscribe to the channel. Um, it's always really, really appreciated. And um, let me know if you, any of you guys have uh, tried one of these whiskies before and what you thought of them. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Let me know in the comments because if someone comes watching this video and they've not tried these whiskies, lovely bit of noise. I'll, uh, I'll end the video now, um, but it, it's always great to have as many inputs in, in the comments down below because people get a more informed decision of these whiskies and it's not just my tastes, which could sometimes be wrong and you might not agree with them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all for the next whiskey walk.